Greetings, it's Maxo Diddley, and today I am going to be showing you how to add a right click to a Unity button. So we've got a normal button here, we can click it, and we're, we're told that the left button is clicked. But let's do a right click. Look, the same thing happens, but we're told a right click occurs. Also, we can hold right click and the button remains held down, we can let go and another right button is clicked. So it functions just like with a normal left click. And I'm going to show you how to do that in Unity. So firstly, my setup is a main camera, directional light, and a canvas. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Game Object, we're then going to go to UI, and we're going to click on Event System. We'll be needing this because we'll be using Unity Events. If you've already got an event system, you don't need to recreate it. Then in our canvas, we're going to go right click, UI, and we're going to do Legacy button just so this works in older versions of Unity that might not have Text Mesh Pro. And we're going to call it Click Me. And this is going to be the button we're going to add right click functionality to. Let's also make it 400 by 100 to make it a little bigger. And let's change the text to B size 40. Now right click in your assets folder, go to create. Go to C Sharp script and make a script called Button Click Handler. Open it up in Visual Studio. We're going to basically remove the start and update function and add in two functions of our own. We're going to do public void on button right click and do a debug log button right clicked. And then we're going to do the same thing but for left click. So basically we're going to be showing off left click and right click in this tutorial. Be sure to save it. In our assets folder, right click, go to create and create another C sharp script and we're going to call it right click button. Firstly, make sure you have all of these libraries imported at the top of your code. So just make sure you type this stuff out up here. And on this line that has public class right click button, after mono behavior, do a comma, do I pointer click handler, do another comma, do I pointer down handler, do another comma and do I pointer up handler. So basically, we're going to be implementing three different interfaces. The I pointer click handler, the I pointer down handler and the I pointer up handler. So we're going to do a few variables up here. So the first one's going to be public unity event on right click. So this line declares a public variable called on right click and it's going to be a unity event, meaning we can subscribe stuff to this event and then when this event screams, oi, I've been right clicked, we can then call functions that do things that we want to do when the button has been right clicked. And we can just drag and drop these functions in the inspector and you'll see later on in this tutorial. So it's really handy. Then we do private color, right click color equals color dot gray. So we're going to serialize field this so we can customize it to be whatever we want. But this is going to be the color that occurs when we click. You know how when you left click a button, it goes to a type of gray. Well, we're going to be doing that here. And for right click color duration is how long do we want the color change animation to occur for. Again, you can do this for your left click button, but we're going to do this for the right click button as well. So we can replicate the animation that occurs on the default left click button with our right click button. And then we're going to do private button. This is just going to store the reference to our button. In the awake method, we're going to do button equals get component button. So make sure you type this out. Then we're going to do public void on pointer click pointer event data event data. And then we're going to do if event data dot button double equals pointer event data dot input button dot write on right click question mark dot invoke. So this um, on pointer click method is the method that occurs when our object has been clicked. And basically we can use this event data to check what type of click it was. So we can then do if event data dot button double equals pointer event data dot input button dot right. That means it was a right click. And what do we do when we have a right click? Well, we want to tell the program. And what do we want to do when we do a right click? Well, we want to broadcast the event and shout, hey, I've been right clicked. So we're going to do on right click, which is our unity event, question mark dot invoke. And this is going to broadcast an event. 
And then any function that subscribes to the event will be will occur. So all our code for what we want to do when we do a right click will then occur. We could stop right there, but there's a few other things we do need to do to make this feel just like the left click. We have got two functions here. We have got public void on pointer down, pointer event data, event data. If event data dot button equals pointer event data dot input button dot right, start coroutine, fade to right click color. And then we're going to do the same, but for pointer up. So we do public void on pointer up, pointer event data, event data. If event data double equals pointer event data dot input button dot right, start coroutine, fade to normal color. So basically, you know those animations that occur with the default button Unity, where it kind of fades to a color and fades back to another color in a short amount of time? We're going to be recreating that for when we click the button. And we structured it in a way so you know how you can click on a button, move the mouse about, and it still keeps the pressed animation or the pressed color? It's going to be able to do that as well. So let's go and make these functions. So since we're using coroutines, we're going to do private enumerator fade to right click color. So this is going to be the function. And firstly, we're going to do color, original color equals button dot target graphic dot color. This line stores the original color of the button before it changes. Then we're going to do float time elapsed equals zero. This line initializes a timer that will keep track of how long the color transition has been going on for. Then we're going to do a while loop. We're going to do while time elapsed is less than right click color duration. This is a while loop that continues to run as long as the transition time hasn't exceeded the specified duration. Our duration, by the way, has been specified up here and by default it's 0.1. Inside we're going to do time elapsed plus equals time dot delta time. This line increases the timer by the time that has passed since the last frame. It's a way of making sure the transition happens smoothly regardless of how fast the game is running. Then we're going to do float t equals time elapsed divided by right click color duration. This line calculates the proportion of the total duration that has passed. It will be a number between 0 and 1. Then we're going to do button.targetGraphic.color equals color.lerp original color, right click color, and T, which is our little float here. This line changes the color of the button. It uses the lerp function to find the color that's partway between the original color and our right click color. And our T variable determines how far the two colors the result should be. It's a kind of a way to smooth the transition of the color changes using fancy maths that I won't go into. And then we do yield return null. This tells Unity to pause the coroutine here and continue on the next frame. This is what allows the color transition to happen over time. This is why we're not just using a function with a while loop because that's going to basically occur based on the speed of the game or the frame rate as opposed to actual time in seconds, which is again why we're using coroutines and nine numerators as opposed to just normal functions. After this loop, we're going to do button.targetGraphic.color equals right click color. This line runs after the loop finishes. It sets the button's color to the right click color, ensuring that it's exactly the color we specified. In case the loop didn't get all the way there, maybe the loop gets a few values off the color we want. We're going to make sure it's going to be the right color after that loop, just in case the color's not exact. I will have these functions in the description below so you can copy and paste. However, we're going to also have a private enumerator fade to normal color. Now this function works in the exact same way, but the tr but it transitions the button's color back to the normal color instead of the right click color. So it's doing all the same, but we have a couple of different colors. Again, it's in the description for you to copy and paste. And that's basically all the code we have to do. So make sure you save everything and go back to the inspector. We're going to go to our click me button. So we're going to drag on the button click script onto our button. We're also then going to drag on our right click script. So you might you might look at this and think, hey, this looks a bit familiar. With our button, we've got an on click event. And here we've got an on right click event. So in our regular button, 
we're going to add to the list. We're going to do runtime only, and we're going to drag our button on here, the click me button. We're going to tell it to do a on button left click function. So we select a function from here, we go down to our button click handler, and we've got two functions in here that we made, on right click and on left click. We're going to do on left click because that's what the normal button click is. We're going to do the same for the right click. We're going to click on the plus. We're going to then drag and drop our button into here. We're then going to click on here. We're going to go to button click handler. And then going to do on button right click. And we've nearly done. However, let's do a couple more things. So, fade duration. And we got right click color duration. These are both 0.1 to replicate the same effect. Then, we're going to click on the pressed color here. And it's 200, 200, 200. So we're going to go to our right click color and change it to be 200, 200, 200. So it's now the same color as there for the pressed color. With all of that set up, save your work and hit play. Let's go to the console. Let's clear it. Let's do a right click. And it says button right clicked. Let's do a couple more. Cool. Let's do left click. And it works. Now let's do a right click and hold it. Then let go. Now let's do a left click and hold and let it go. Let's do a left click, hold it and drag it off the button. And nothing happens because nothing would happen. Let's do the same with the right click. Nothing happened. We have recreated the behavior of a left click but for right click. So thanks for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed and subscribe for more Unity tutorials.